Hello, my name is Lowell, pronouns he, him, and this is our sixth or seventh session of Apocalypse Keys Till We Have Faces. Uh, we are just after our second mission, and we are bringing our crew back to our Division HQ there in Gothenburg, uh, and we are going to do the sort of the debrief and checking in the daily lives and all of that stuff for our characters uh, before we look at moving forward into that next case. So uh, let us check in on the mechanical side of things. Uh, Serial, uh, you still have a couple of conditions marked. Uh, I do. We will... We will uh, allow some talk therapy to clear at least one of those while you're at Division HQ. Um, let's also uh, uh, see what you would like to have as your start of session XP question. I guess I'm opting this time for one I haven't used before, which is, did you tell the truth when you shouldn't have? Okay. All right, I think that is a so the the, the trick for the rest of the players is can you spot that when it's <laughs> yes spot the spot the truth. <laughs> uh, did you get an advance or a ruin move? Uh, no, I I oh did I get a ruin move? Um, no, I think I already had that one. Um, no, I don't think I don't think I made much use of ruin last time. To be honest, okay. no, uh, my ruin track is currently empty. Wow, uh, but you are. Uh, two points away from another uh, standard move. Yes, I am. And I have plans for ruin. Okay. All right. Uh, that brings us to Lissa. Uh, what would you I'm like? I'm sorry. Oh. I have to. Yeah, I found uh, it's It's where it is on this page. Down there on row 132, I took a, a move from another playbook, which one I can't quite remember, Crowned by dream, exalted by nightmare. You have learned how to harness dream, dreams and create great and terrible weapons from them. When you take dreams and turn them into dangerous weapon, mark ruin and choose one. Blah. Okay. I I like that one. Uh, yeah, you used that last time, didn't you? No. Uh, or you I just I, took I, it at I, the I, end. I, I took uh, my, my ruin kind of stacked up to the point where I could take it at the end. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry, Lisa, let me come back to you. Sure. Uh, uh, what do you want as your XP trigger? That's a really good question. And I'm looking at it right now. Um, can you come back to me on that? Absolutely. Did you get a ruin move or an advance? Well, I'm at one XP, which suggests that I got a move, but I don't think I picked it. Okay. Um, cause what, cause you've already gotten two advances and you've got a move from another playbook and you've got a, yeah. you've got one of your surge moves. Um, I took a new surge move. I took a move from another playbook, but that was done last time. Yeah. Like, cause that was an effect. And you what? definitely got enough XP. So yeah. Uh, so think about, uh, yeah. what you want to take uh, as your other move. You don't have to take it right now. Sure. You can take it on the fly, uh, as you wish. We have a couple of the division moves that have been taken, but we've got a number that are still out there and available, uh, and they are on their own tab in the book. Gotcha. Uh, Egther, uh, what would you like as your uh, XP trigger question? I will go for, did you seek solitude and turn away from hope for the future? <laughs> All right. I like that uh, a lot. Did you get a ruin move or an advance? Uh, I don't think so. I'm close to an advance. I only have two ruin, but I have two ruin advanced there, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because we did XP in that last yeah. session. We did, yeah. Yeah, then no. Uh, no more advances for me. Okay. I have the ones that take it before. So you from the, the decompression, the time that you have in, in Barcelona before you head back, uh, the time to catch your breath, everybody may clear one of your conditions. And if you have another condition marked uh, uh, or two, 
you will we'll try and do a scene to clear that up back at division HQ to kind of reset that. Uh, but uh, you will head back to uh, the headquarters and we do cut to that same set that we've seen before with the uh, bubble camera and the recording equipment and the the uh, one-way uh, glass and the, the table. Uh, and Egther, you are seated there across from your handler, Miss Bariska, and she's going over some papers. You all have written your reports. And she's looking down and she says, in your own words, would you tell me what happened there at the gathering with the food stall and the fire and such? Uh, 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 there was someone that attacked you or you attacked them. I'm, I'm trying to follow what's going on. One of the problems being that there was some kind of pulse that took out all of the surveillance, the video and the audio and the phones and all of that stuff. We have just the very start of it where you seem to be conversing with someone. And then it looks like like a fight broke out. What happened, Igther? I should note that if I stumble a bit here, it, be, it may be because I, it's not clear uh, sure. to my memory as a player exactly what happened. Um, and I'm not sure how forthcoming Igther will be here. Because he's not in a in a good place at this point. Um, what conditions yeah. do you still have marked right now? Uh, cornered and despairing. So, uh, yeah, I think he's worried about. I I, I just need to process this out loud. I think mm -hmm. uh, he's worried about his own mental and emotional state because he kind of lost it. Um, and he's worried that if he admits to that, then Division will for real start to look for ways to, to get rid of it. And, uh, he, and he's worried about that partly because it will it might be dangerous for him depending on how they try to do it but it would also push him away from uh from his connection to humanity which would definitely send him on the path to to becoming a harbin so there's part self preservation part uh fear of of what he might become so um yeah I uh, encountered uh, a being, an ancient being, who I uh, believed to have uh, murdered several of my people. Is this someone you knew that you had encountered before? No. But he uh, he carried markings and uh, expressed himself in ways that indicated that he had slain my uh, my folk. It didn't seem like he was involved with the mission that you were looking into, though, I believe. From, from what I've seen, he doesn't seem to have been a participant in that, or uh, or do you think you just weren't able to uncover his role in that? Did we get 
was he the one who had the the um, uh, casing with the with the uh, contact lens thing? No, you guys found that on the ground. He didn't actually have it. Oh, okay, okay. Um, not as far as I know. It seems like you showed great restraint. If that was the case, that some of your you met someone who had killed some of your brethren. Because you didn't level the block. <laughs> I don't... He's just not going to answer. What are you doing with your hand? Oh yeah, did he? Uh, he he lost the the the, uh, the glamour, glamour hand, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think at first he he holds up his his remaining hand. Uh, <laughs> my hand is fine, as you can see. Fair enough. Did this being that you encountered say anything else about your people? Hmm. Okay. I, yeah. if I, I don't remember him saying anything, but but I want to. I think she's kind of pressing you on the point. He he did say something when he was dying that he had been like a, a guide to the afterlife or something yeah. like that. Um, I kind of think I I have to reveal my heart here. Okay. To say something about. That. Yeah. Uh, has has this conversation so far generated any darkness tokens for you? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, doubt or confusion. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. I think three for that. Um, let me look at the move. Um, I think the high roll is more interesting there, so... I okay. can spend three, right? Absolutely. Then I will do that. All right. We'll roll her up. I need to open the roller. I need to shut down again, or I won't be able to stay in the roll. Three, okay, delay. So two dice, three. That's the 13, so it's definitely in the high range. Uh, I have a moment of closeness, but also weakness. Ask each other, how do I scare you at this moment? I think this is, he, he tells her about um, this being as he lay dying. explained his role in and uh, he was not the cause of uh, of the death of my my brethren so yeah how do i scare her no, sorry, you choose one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ask we ask each other. Yeah, yeah. So, so you ask me. Uh, so, so I think uh, that 
you do worry her at this moment. Like you can see that she is genuinely worried when you kind of reveal that you haven't said anything and you finally admit that, that maybe, maybe you did this and maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. And she's afraid of you cycling down into your own guilt. Like that's what that actually worries and scares her because she knows that that's, that's one of the ways that your people can die. Um, and how does her reaction to you kind of scare you? Yeah, I think uh, it, it pushes me closer to that point where um, I can no longer maintain the the, the situation the, uh, that I will have to I I, I will be pushed in, in, in into that situation with e either division takes me down or I uh, go off the deep end. I am going to recommend that you speak with the Oracle for a therapy session. That is voluntary, but I think it would do you some good. I will do as you wish. All right. Uh, thank you for going over that, and thank you for giving me the, the, the full details on that. And I will take a bond with uh, what darkness demands from the Okay. Lissa. Yes. Uh, he will be there. Miss Bariska is going over the notes. Uh, and she says, things seem to have gone better this time. I mean... Besides Egg, they're completely losing his shit. What do you the mean? Serial. Hold, hold on. Let me stop there. What do you mean completely losing his shit? Was this not in the after action report? There's some notes about it. I don't, but uh, I don't think it's described quite as, as uh, forcefully as you seem to be making it out to be. God damn it. I thought Surya would have put this in his report. Um, what makes you say that Egther lost his shit, so to speak? Is there a note in the after action report about a fire and, you know, uh, Surya kind of covering things up a little bit, saying it was magic or special effects or something? We have a incident that we have a, a, a little bit of video on of Egther uh, getting into a fight with a supernatural entity. But at that point, we lost video. Uh, uh, we know that there was a fire. We know that people were not injured. Uh, uh, and we know that Serial managed to control uh, the panic crowds afterwards. Yeah, all of that's true. Mm -hmm. And so where does this losing his shit fit into that? She reaches over and she pushes a button on the console next to her. She says, would you like to say that that was a, a misspeaking on your part? You know, I would simply okay. because then she'll she'll hold up her finger, and she pushes the button to restart the recording. So uh, you you were saying, yeah, there was just it. 
it was a stressful moment for everyone involved. But we stopped the fire. We covered things up so that civilians didn't get too much of an idea of what was going on. Yeah, I have a couple of notes here about you managing to use your powers in an incredibly controlled way to draw people's attention away from problematic situations. I mean, even a stopped clock is right twice a day, right? Uh, Unless it's I, digital and blinking. I, I don't think it's a question of stop clock. I know you are are downplaying uh, what you did. Um, I mean, the notes I have is that you push your powers to the limit there in the theater, uh, uh, burned yourself out uh, in order to, to save everyone. Uh, and certainly acted there with the intent of uh, preserving life. I mean, they're just, they're fucking college students, you know? They need to have like the next 60, 70 years to figure out how not to be dipshits, right? I mean, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get that chance otherwise. I mean, I didn't really get that chance. I mean, you resent them for that? Not resent. Mm -hmm. A little jealous. No, oh, that's that seems fair. I think that 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 that's a a a, a real and human reaction. Were you happy with your performance? That, thank you. That's the first time somebody's talked to me about like compared me to being human for quite some time. I've never said anything but. Well, were I mean, you happy how often with your I screw up? Uh, yeah. were, you, were, you, were you happy with your performance this time? I don't think happy is the right word for it. Um, okay. I don't feel guilty. That's a start. We can work with that. Thank you very much. Serial. Uh, you're once again in there with uh, 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 Miss Pariska and uh, the shadowy form over in the corner. Um, I don't have time for this. We need to organize a division unit to find and take out Gazamak now. Gazamak wasn't destroyed? Uh, I thought that he was... You can't destroy Gazamak unless you really try to do it. So, so, you know, we can debrief some other time, but now you need to get a task force together and I will go after him. That is not how this works, Ariel. I, this is how it has to work because otherwise everything is at risk. You are as they say, too close to this situation. Oh, I'm very close to it. Yes, and I intend to act on that closeness. You're not going to. We have other people to track down and corner, figure out how to contain Gazimac for this moment. Now, I say that. I want you to realize that we understand the danger and threat that Gazimac poses so that when we are able to move on him, you will be at the spear point of that. There is no doubt. But this I need is to not be kept informed. Uh, 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 any briefing documents that currently exist? That seems reasonable. That would reassure me that you are serious about this. As we find information on Gazimac, as we have steps forward, you will be kept in the loop on that. Because you know what he did, don't you? No. He used a mortal directly spitefully to get at me that's that's not fair on this occasion why why wasn't it fair you two have 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 skirmished 
with people, with humans, with mortals over the, the, the centuries. Yes. But this time, it was someone I knew. Lane mattered. Um, I think I may have triggered uh, Reveal My Heart. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so I will roll two d d6 and roll and, and throw my single darkness point at it. Okay. Uh, that gets me to eight. Uh, so choose one. Um, I think that this soothes my heart and I clear one condition. I she stop goes, raging. She, she goes, okay, I understand. I, I thought that this was simply an extension of your old rivalry, but this is something new. Yes. I will make ah. sure that you are kept absolutely informed on what's going on. Thank you. I'm are you grateful. okay? Uh, I'm, I'm fine to proceed. How did you feel about the rest of the team this time? I thought that I made some progress with Lissa. I thought that I provided her with some perspective that maybe she had not previously had. Um, she is, after all, criminally young. Um, she, you mentioned she thought you did a good job controlling the crowd uh, in the aftermath of the uh, incident at the the outdoor gathering? Uh, well, the, the briefing did suggest a degree of discretion was necessary. So I did what was necessary. How would you describe Egther's state of mind? Um, I think Egther is, at this point, relatively less stable than he has been. I was... Um, to give this some perspective, um, I found I was more worried about Egtha than I was about Lissa, which perhaps give you some sense of my view of this. All right. As their de facto team leader, I felt that uh, I was able to manage Lissa I am not sure that I could have managed Aether. I have to say that when I walked in on the devastation he caused, I I I I, I regret having bawled out Lissa, because uh, I assumed wrongly that it was down to her. That's when I needed to um, call on the joy of social media to manage the situation. One last question: What did Aether tell you about this? supernatural person that he killed uh next to nothing in fact i i'm not sure he told me anything about him um have you talked to weeper they were together at the time weeper is still in transit she says sort of hesitantly <laughs> um well weeper may have a view all right well uh, hopefully we'll get you may wish if you consider yourself the de facto leader, you may wish to speak with Egther about exactly what happened there. Uh, I'm very happy to do that, ma'am. You are uh, you are thanked and dismissed. I, I liked thanked. I didn't like dismissed. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's do some at division scenes. Uh, uh, in the the sort of the the following days, uh, Egther, do you want to call a scene with a PC with an NPC? Uh, something else. What what do we want to see here for you? Um, 
did we do a list of start of session thing? Because that might play into it. Oh, that's a good question. Let, let's let's uh, figure that out. So uh, I went ahead and took a move, which actually gives me another start of session thing. So the first thing that I need to do. Oh, and I also I also uh, picked the question. Did you destroy something precious and beautiful? OK. Um, so there's the starting move where I need to choose my heart and share the burden of my power with. And I need to say why they ho I hope they'll save me from what the darkness demands. Um, you know, I wish Paul was here. <laughs> um, so can we tentatively say weeper and then check in with Paul when he arrives? I think that seems fair. Okay, because at this point, like having seen what Weeper did with Agther, I think I'm really respecting Weeper's. I hesitate to call it his empathy, Weeper's empathy and compassion. Because I could tell that Weeper tried to reach out to me. Weeper seemed to get through to Agther. There was a lot of. There's a lot of comfort there, at least attempts at it. Um, yeah. And then the other start of session, and give me a second while I screw it into like line 400 or whatever the hell it is now. Mm -hmm. I took the, the devil's advocate from the shade playbook. You have a special relationship with a mentor, someone ancient and terrifying who wears human skin. They tell me what I need to know as long as I can prove I am worth their care and interest. At the start of each session, I reflect on a moment with my mentor. I spend darkness tokens and roll. Who is that mentor? You know... Would it be too much to identify that my ne my mentor is Serial's nemesis, uh, Gaspacho or whatever his name is? I know Gaspacho is a soup, but uh, Gazamac. Gazamac. Do but that I didn't think, know. Like, like, is it is it that you don't know that it's Gazamac, or is it that you've just realized that it's Gazamac? Like, what do you think that is? I think that up to this point, I did not know it was Gazamac. But okay. that when I saw the mask slip in the theater, that's when I realized it. All right. Alan, are you okay with that? How do you contact Gazamac? Gazamac's kind of a god, right? Kind of, yeah. So... I'm not sure that I necessarily would have contacted so much as he just sort of shows up and starts saying things to me. Yeah. Kind of like Surreal. Yeah. I, I imagine this is probably in dreams. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 that kind of thing. Uh, so it says spend darkness tokens and roll, right? It does. Okay. I will, I will spend all two of my darkness to well hold on let me see what else do i have marked you know would it be too much to kind of be shaken from that realization and kind of be reactive about it sure if you want okay i will take the minimum number of darkness tokens there and i will spend so that's two darkness tokens, and I will spend three on the roll. Okay. Alan, how do you spell Gazamac? G A Z. Mm -hmm. See, I play with Americans too low, too much now. G A Z. <laughs> yeah. Z. G A Z A M A K. Uh, gotcha. I put it in the chat. Thank you. All righty. 
Um, let me flip back over here. That's an 11. Okay. So, <laughs> and this would be a flashback. So this is to a previous, previous yes. moment. Uh, so choose one uh, from the above. What is it you want from the above? Oh, I, I think that uh, the only one that really makes sense is that Gazmak tested me ruthlessly and without mercy, because that lines up with everything that I saw in the theater. So mark an XP, uh, and uh, what what is it like? What was the moment you know, you're, you're you're falling back and remembering before this whole revelation when this mentor? What what did they look like to you? Like what? How did they appear? What was before you realized they were Gazamac? What was the relationship? They reminded me of the strictest teacher at the private school that my parents sent me to. Uh, Ms. Rickler, R-I-C-H-L-E-R. -E okay. And she was very adamant about calling her Ms. And, you know, just in dreams, that was the form. And what was, what was your mentor, Gazimak, disappointed with you about? Like, what was, what was the thing that you're, you're flashing back to that was the disappointment? In the training sessions, it started with me using my abilities much more precisely, much more targeted. And Gazimak, in the form of that teacher, it just kept stressing that I was not exercising my power, that someday I would need it and I would absolutely need to know how to wield it with greater effect not this targeted nonsense there's there's times when only destroying things and wiping a slate will actually solve a problem and you have to be prepared for that you are not letting your power do enough let me ask you Another question before I have you make that choice there. Uh, uh, is this your patron as well? Or is that, that a different figure? Uh, if you're talking about my dark patron, yeah. I believe that's actually a different harbinger. I don't think Gazmac's actually a harbinger. Is Gazmac? Of course, he's a harbinger. You know, let me ask you this. Which would you have more fun with? No, no, this is, this, is, this is on you, on, on how you want to play it. Hmm. Well, Gazimak takes many forms, right? True. Different aspects of, of Gazimak, so that the audience kind of knows. Yeah. And maybe I, now it might be the case that I think my harbinger, my patron may be somebody else, but the audience would mm -hmm. see enough there to say, oh, girl, it's Gazimak. <laughs> Uh, so uh, from the 11 plus, do you have those two choices of reporting I back information indeed. or bargaining? Which, which are you going to take? Oh, what do you think I'm going to take? Well, give you're me definitely going to take me bargaining. That, give me that one ruin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to bargain with the Harbinger to gain more power. Absolutely. And, uh, that actually marks off my fifth ruin box. So would you like me to take that ruin move now or go later? ahead and take that ruin move now, if you'd like. Okay. But, uh, you make the decision. I want to cut back to Egther because we kind of yes. interrupted his, uh, thing. Uh, so Egther, you were saying 
uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, who, who did you want to call the scene with? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to see what what happened with with uh, Lisa's heart and uh, that sort. Of thing. Um, hmm. Think, uh, I think Egbert is trying to stay away from people as much as possible. Uh, he is like staying in his room and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I mean, soon he, he's going to get called to this therapy session. Um, Maybe he runs. He he bumps into someone on the way there. That could be interesting. Sure. You know, there's a thing where where uh, your handler uh, sends you a note that says, "Hey, if you are interested, the oracle is available at these times." And blah 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 blah, kind of thing. And eventually, uh, uh, you decide. So, who do you run into on the way there? Um, I think Lisa. I think I kind of want be, because we haven't had a lot of uh time together recently i kind of want to feel how that okay uh lissa where does Egther run into you hmm. i'm on way i'm on my way back from the cafeteria with two small cups of espresso two dopios little pitcher of cream and a sugar cube or two and i mean i was actually heading toward Egther's room to see if he'd finally talked to me i've probably been knocking on his door and getting no response so is that is that okay andish yeah yeah yeah. that sounds okay. great hey i was i was just coming to see i love but maybe you know coffee well, espresso, but you, uh, you okay? I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, have been sent to the Oracle. I mean, that's not great. But that's not great, but it could be worse, right? Also, could we like go to your room and talk? Because you know how they get when I like take things out of the cafeteria. Like when I don't, when I take a tray out, and they have to go find it. I don't want to get yelled at just standing in there here in the hall. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think Egther does that all the time and just hasn't registered that that's a, that's an issue. So. <laughs> I think he like he piles trays in his room and then yeah. just puts them out in the corridor for someone to to come get them. But yeah, um, perhaps after I um, if you you could wait for me there, keep calm, company. I mean, if you... the espresso will be cold, but you know what? Take it with you. Just grab a cup and take it with you. I'll chill in your room and wait. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. He, he Do you want the sugar that. cream? Anything like that? Uh, yeah, I think he, he he puts in a lot of sugar. Uh, he's uh, no no cream, but a lot of sugar. And I'll just smile at that and reach into my pocket and say, and pull out like this plastic wrapped biscotti. Say, it's almond. I think you'll like it. And he he's holding the the he's taking this tiny little cup in his hand, and he just has the one hand. So he I think he he starts to reach out with his thumb for for the and then he just pulls it back and I uh, I should go. I'll just open up the package and like plop it into your cup. <laughs> I'll 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 be in your room when you get back. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Let's do this. Let me do a serial, and then let me come back to you, Egg Egther. 
uh, on that uh, visit with the Oracle. Uh, Surreal, what do you want to do? I think that um, it's time to talk to the Gath guys and the Gath girls, uh, my fan base. Okay. Um, so I, I am going to offer people a fantastic opportunity. You know, that it, I, I will be offering the opportunity to a, a, a personal one-to-one -one meeting online with me uh, to those people who spread the word, the gath word, uh, the most in the next 24 hours. And, and you've got a big, big following here. That's the theory. So, so what I am, uh, what I'm suggesting is that that I'm I'm triggering ruin. I will rise again down okay. on row 174. Um, gather an army that will serve me. I'd like to mark ruin, okay, and uh, just begin to um, activate the Gath guys and gals. Absolutely. What does that look like? Like, what is the montage we see in this in the TV show that shows us you gathering quietly behind the scenes this army? Oh, I I I think it's it's much it's not behind the scenes at all, really, because I am officially a division influencer. Um, and so this is very much about you know your friendly division wants to get the word out of you know the important work we do you know i can't share the details of that work with you and 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 in order to get that word out i'm offering a you know a one-to-one -one online meet to and, those and of you that get the word out so what how are they getting the word out like what are they what are they doing are they are they I just think it's going about, online? What? It's about likes. It's about, uh, you know, the retweets. It's about, um, you know, dressing as surreal uh, and, you know, uh, doing, you know, uh, TikToking their their surreal impressions uh, out there in public. Um, it's It's about, you know, anything that gets the word out. How is this though? One of the things being is how what is the portion of this, this that is clandestine? Because one of the things is is that you, the the phrasing is when you secretly work towards reclaiming your glory and power. I mean that's all the public facing side. So what is going on? Oh, it's, behind it's the scenes? it's the subtext in the message, isn't it? Because it's the um, where am I? Where am I? It's a long way up and down these, isn't it? Uh, yes. This is call me master and uh, honey tongue and clouded minds. This is just, you know, sliding into these messages. The sense that, you know, you're not just doing this for division. You're doing this as a personal favor for me. All right. Uh... And then you get to react to that. Yeah. Who is the PC or NPC that has the means to weaken you? That you give like gives you that seed of doubt. I think that's going to be Weeper. Because, you know, Weeper and I are both kind of in the God business. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that and 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 it's it's Weeper's humanity as we've increasingly seen it that is uh that is actually the bit of this that that is the fly in the ointment because at some point if weeper appeals to me i would i might find that difficult to resist yeah hard choice 
that seems reasonable to me. Yeah. Uh, so you have have completed another step on that pathway uh, uh, and moved that along. Uh, Egther. You will go to see the, the oracle. Um, you go in. There is a figure who's seated cross-legged. He's not seated on the desk. He's floating above it. He is beific and golden uh, uh, there. There's, there's kind of uh, uh, diaphanous raiment that, that floats around him from the, the inner glow of enlightenment that he has. Uh, or she, it's hard to tell. Uh, and they will say, Egther. Come in. Yeah, he, he goes in, closes the door behind him. I think he, he's drunk the espresso on the way and just put the cup somewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You I was, are yeah, sorry. troubled. Yes. What is it that you need to know? Mm. Um, hmm. the things the the um, the things I need to know are vast and deep beyond human comprehension. That is what they all say. What is it that you need to know right now? What question do you need answered? Oof. Um. I think maybe there's a bit more back and forth, but let's let's skip past that because I, I don't sure. think I, I will go straight for it, but. Yeah, the, the, when, when he can finally get to the question, I think it is, I need to know whether the being I encountered in, in, the, in Spain had true knowledge of my people that I do not do no longer have and if and what that knowledge was the oracle will look at you and will say the being that you encountered in Spain bargained for his survival generations ago ancient like you and served a death and did as he told you help those ancient ones find their passage on and then finished his bargain with that death and was as you saw him there you ask what true knowledge he had. The true knowledge he had was surprise at seeing you. Because he had met a giant recently, and it was not you. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how, 
How could that be? How how do you know this? What what are you not telling me? I have told you everything. I am the oracle. This is how I help. I answer the question that you need answered right now, and I have answered that for you. I know it has created more turmoil for you, but it is giving you a purpose, right? You have given me a purpose. This is true, but you may not have given me the purpose you had wished. I wish for nothing except for you to find your way. I'd also like a five-star review when you're done, but that's a whole other matter. <laughs> Uh, let's stop there. I think that's a good, a good line. And uh, we'll take 10 and uh, then we will come back. Okay. So, Lissa, let me swing back to you uh, and give you another chance to call another scene. Do you want to have that scene with you and Agther or do you want to do something else? Let's do the scene with Agther. Okay. Uh, so, Ector, when you come back to your room after that meeting with the Oracle, is your mood deeper? Is it the same? Is it changed? What what do you, what do we what do we see there? Um, Ector is very agitated. Um, I think he's. I think that's expressed mostly in that he's he's not staying still. Usually he's very um, he he moves very deliberately and and that sort of thing. But now he's like pacing around the room, and I don't think he's talking that much. But he's pacing around. He's picking up his books and flipping through them and and tossing them away and and. Um, yeah, uh, that sort of thing. I, I think he's kind of ignoring Lissa, at least uh, to begin with. Okay. Lissa? Stop fidgeting and sit the hell down. I mean, it was just a dopio. That's like hardly any espresso. <laughs> uh, and he, he looks to you like if he's suddenly like like he suddenly remember that that you're here. Um oof. Oh. this is not mere uh stimulants. I have I have things to do. And what are these things? I I don't know. I don't know where to begin. Do you even know what you need to be doing? Because, I mean, to me, I'm just watching you, like, walk around and, like, flip books around and fiddle with things i'm not i'm not seeing you actually do anything there's no organization or thought or plan to this so do you even know what you're doing um no no i don't i don't know what i'm doing i need to this this oracle this arrogant little mortal told me that told me that there might be another one of my people left somewhere out there i must find them but i don't know don't know how you know 
let's go. Let's head down to the motor pool and let's head down to the motor pool. The motor pool will grab a vehicle, will grab something to get the hell out of here. I can, uh, I've got somebody I can ask and I'm pretty damn sure I can get an answer. You, you have knowledge of someone who knows of my people? Um, I wouldn't put it quite that way. I've never asked them about your people because I've always thought that you were the only one left. But I'll put it to you this way. I can get an answer out of them one way or another. So let's just, let's get a car, let's get a helicopter, let's get whatever. We'll get the shit out of here. We will go. I will. I'll make a call on the way. And, uh, you know, we'll go find your person. Whoever they are, wherever they are, we'll figure it out. You got planes, you got transatlantic flight. I mean, shit, I could probably like open a wormhole from here to wherever they are. And I'm trying to embody the reactive condition. It's like, oh, okay, you said this. Let's go right now. And I, I will take four tokens for that. If I mean, you if you truly believe this person could know something, then yes, let. Let us go. Um, absolutely. 100%. I want to make a quick stop by the cafeteria for another. You know, you know what? There's Starbucks everywhere. We can find one. We'll get coffee out in the world. Let's go. And we're not telling anybody. We're not telling anybody. We're just going to go. We're going to find your person. We're going to get them, you and whoever it is back here. We'll see about that, but let's find them first. Find this this information source of yours. Yeah, that's not so much a finding thing as it is just a kind of uh, reach out and... Um, I think <laughs> I think at it, this point, Egfe is already out the door. Yeah. Like, he's, he's not waiting anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm walking, and I'm probably having to almost... It's not a it's not a run or a sprint or a trot or anything like that, but it is a really fast walk just to keep up. All right, so let me stop you two here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to come to 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 Serial next. We have a meta moment here. Uh, uh, now there are a couple ways that we can handle this. Uh, uh, I'll suggest two of them, and one is that. You do go and do this, but we sidebar that and, you know, we can flash back to what happened uh, during that time. Or the other way is that, you know, as you are getting ready to go, that is when you are scrambled for this next mission. Um, I think that more of the stakes fall on your shoulders, Andish. So let me start with you on like what what you would prefer as the way to play that out. Ooh. Um because we can always come back to you know the the uh, at the next sort of uh uh in between case thing at the the, the Lissa Egther uh, uh road show. Um or or you know maybe it's the, the gratification is deferred. Yeah, I think getting pulled into the next mission is better because I think if we actually get some useful information. I'm not sure what would pull Egther back into sure. into a mission. And if I that's think okay with you, uh, I figured that was good. I figured that's what was going to okay. happen. So, so, so I think it is that the two of you are are scrambling together when you get the 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 beep and the call uh, that that say we need you two in the briefing room uh, ASAP. 
But Cyril, I want to give you a chance to call a scene here uh, or do an interaction before we move to that that briefing. Uh, no, I want to um, to get on with uh, rising uh, again because uh, I'd like to hide my presence and conceal, conceal my actions completely by pulling what in the trade is called a perfect Loki okay. with vague glamour. Uh, so that I have on call a uh, a perfect copy of myself to go about my normal business while I get on with pl plotting my route back to power. So uh, is that a particular move that we're doing here? Uh, yeah, it's I will rise again down on 174. And one of my uh, one of my stepping stones on the way to power is to hide my presence and complete conceal my actions completely. So you are sending a copy out to do this or are you saying you're sending a copy on the mission i think all i'm doing all the audience will see um that uh maybe they see surreal uh reading the file in some secure location within division the files that he's been given access to on gazamac okay um and uh and and you know having a, a polite conversation with with the people on duty there um uh and then, you know, sinking through the floors to uh, to uh, to Surreal, in fact, going to visit, say, Big D, the broken monster down on the deep levels or, um, you know, from the shadows, just a shade um, surveying the the black museum mm -hmm. and, and the like. Just the, the sense that now we know that Surreal is able to create a copy to just keep every, you know, keep the normal business ticking over. Okay. So he can get about his secret plans. But uh, you're, without you yourself are about. going on the mission. I, I asked for oh, a yeah. very oh, yeah, particular yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, want to make yeah, sure yeah, on yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so I'll yeah. mark Ruin and tick that one. Okay. Um, and then you get to, again. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Surreal. Let's see here. It must be said that the options for the GM in this context are not as tightly structured as the options for the player. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I've got a suggestion if you want it. Oh, I I think what we see is 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 this. I think that as we see you do that that flip and that vision and that that thing. I think there's a moment when we see one of these division agents pass you by uh, in one of these forms and they walk on past. And I think that we do see the camera get closer to them, closer to them. And I think it, it kind of finally swoops in and we can see in their eye reflected in their eye, a perfect image of Gazamac. <laughs> uh, he already has an entry in with Lissa, so he's undoubtedly here. And I think that is a question of the faction that is, as we say, uh, uh, rising in power. Right. Do you? Because right, I was going to put that down as division learns of my plans and gains something similar to what I just achieved. I wonder uh, if we want to just have Gazamac is also running a perfect Loki within division. That's I think what what what, what I'm I'm saying is the right. the, the latter. Hey, Paul. Apologies for being late. That's okay. Uh, and sort of surreal at the end of that, you will, will, will get the, the call, the scramble down. Uh, and uh, the four of you, uh, Weeper, you've just arrived back. Uh, you were delayed. We can figure out why, why that happened. But in the meantime, you've just arrived, gotten off. Uh, the transport, and you're immediately bundled down to the briefing room. And uh, uh, the others look a little worse for wear, Weeper, when you see them. Egther looks anxious, 
Uh, Alyssa probably looks a little upset. Surreal looks like uh, the cat who ate the canary in some ways, uh, more than usual. Uh, uh, when you, you come back uh, and uh, Miss Bariska uh, will pull you up, uh, uh, all of you in, and she will say, I know you've only had a little bit of time uh, following that last mission, uh, but we need to dispatch you ASAP because it's going to take a while for you to get to where you're going. So uh, you are being sent to Island Zero. You are going to be assisting an organization, uh, acronym Mysterious. Uh, they are searching for a missing Halamaw class monster and their team pilot. Uh, you're going to immediately head to rendezvous with Commander Fletcher Payne, who is a former Halamaw pilot and commander of the outpost at Island Zero. We need you to investigate the facility in Island. Please note, only engage with Rift class monsters if only if necessary. Uh, we have evidence that a Harbinger class monster may have possessed uh, a Halama and its pilot. We need you to go there, find the door of power, and contain it before the Harbinger can claim ascension. Some of you will already be familiar with Island Zero, but for those of you who may not, Island Zero is the location of the rift that opened uh, uh, September 13th, 2000. Uh, there was an incident involving uh, a team of scientists and engineers working on a location in the Atlantic uh, when they managed to trigger an inactive volcano deep underwater and the rift opened at that point. Uh, it is an interdimensional scar over into a nightmare realm. Uh, colossal monsters come through the rift uh, from time to time, each each capable of destroying entire cities. And while there has been some control information of that, that, that is the key to some of the destructive incidents of that year. Uh, Island Zero, of course, is not on any maps, and it never will be. Uh, it is an island that is filled with larger-than-life beasts, creatures, things. Uh, we have been able to, or rather, the organization Mysterious has been able to harness some of these monsters by psychically connecting them to pilots. Uh, they are the ones that fight back against the things that come through the rift. Uh, those beasts are called the Halamaw. Uh, it is a never-ending, ongoing war that we have been engaged with for the last two-some decades. Uh, the island is uh, difficult to get to. There are multiple levels of occult barriers. We have psychics all over the world that are working to reinforce those zero point shields to keep the place contained. Uh, as I said, they have lost a Halama and a pilot, and the circumstances do not look good. We are sending you in to assist them with the situation. Are there questions? Pardon me. Um, yes. Um, Hallamore. So, so th is a Hallamore capable of confronting one of the rift monsters? A Hallamore is a rift monster, but it is a rift monster a... that has been psychically connected. We know that some of the monsters that come through the rift are Hallamore. They 
we are able to psychically connect with them and they fight uh, against the other monsters. Uh, and then there's a class of monsters that are not Halama. They are simply these rift monsters. From what I understand from the organization Mysterious, it there's no good signs for how and why that exactly happens. It but sounds they are like less we... powerful than Harbingers, yeah? Yes. They are a source of power that is raw and uncontrolled, and there's some fear about what could happen if the Harbingers, if if a Harbinger is able to tap into and control that. It doesn't I know this sound is, like we need to oh. pardon. I know this is a little bit different from your last mission. Uh, uh I suspect this is going to be a little more confrontational and on the ground for you. But there's still a degree of investigation. You're going to want to look into the facility and the personnel there and see what you can ascertain. Liz, I interrupted you. Quite all right. It sounds like this is an operation where we don't need to be as concerned about, and I'll look at Serial, being precise with what we do. Oh, no, you still need to be brushes. precise. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, you don't have to worry about public displays. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, people getting wind of it so, uh, in that sense. Finally. She goes to say something else, but then she stops herself. Egther, questions? I'm listening. You could turn off your I Apple Watch, I have been sent to this island before to uh, handle this problem. It seems like a useful endeavor. Uh, and we'll come to some establishing questions. We might might uh, uh, connect up some things here in a bit. Uh, but they will uh, uh, get you uh, set. Uh, now, uh, for anybody, you are welcome to clear another condition to represent your downtime uh, before you head out on this mission, if you have any that are marked. Okay. Uh, let me pull that up. Uh, so you will uh, head out. And essentially, they will, will will ship you out to the docks, uh, and they will put you on a, uh, a, a Swedish Royal Navy uh, small uh, uh, vessel, uh, and uh, they will will send you out uh, on that. Uh, and it is. A, a staged trip. Uh, last time when you went to sort of to, to cross dimensional lines to go to that first base, uh, it was more that your, your vessel kind of went through uh, fields and stuff. This time it is that uh, the ship that's carrying you transits and stops at uh, a couple of different locations. One is uh, essentially uh, off uh, 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 off the coast in the North Sea. Uh, there is a, uh, a mining uh, deck. What, uh, I forget what you call those. Um, the, uh, an offshore mining rig. Uh, offshore rig. A drilling. Drilling, drilling rig. Really. Uh, uh, where uh, the, the 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 ship will uh, land, and they will bring uh, the four of you up. Uh, and they have a team of uh, uh, arcane technicians uh, who will run a variety of tests on you uh, uh, just to confirm uh, some things. Uh, and then we'll uh, uh, essentially cast a set of spells and things to allow you to pass through the barriers. Uh as opposed to last time where it was a little casual passing through the weirdness, everyone here is in military uniform. Even the mages that are doing this 
are are dressed up in full uh, gear. You know, they have uh, 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 their insignias. They're carrying sidearms. Uh, everything here is very, very tight uh, as you uh, pass through this. Uh, and uh, it happens like that a couple of times as you uh, uh, go through there. Uh, you will sort of on that last stage of uh, the, the trip, uh, you will uh, uh, stop at an island that is, you think it's probably man-made, uh, dropped here, uh, and there is a, looks like an ancient temple that has been recreated here, maybe moved from another location, uh, and you can see that there are military personnel here uh, who seem to take shifts, turning into like ancient uh, ritual priest robes to sit and meditate and cast out their attentions to maintain the field that conceals this place from the world. Um, they've got a little mess hall uh, uh, and then they have to down these little outfits with like uh, uh, tiny wreaths on them and stuff. Uh, and this is a couple of days of, of incredibly boring travel. Uh, the Wi-Fi goes out almost immediately. Uh, and uh, on the third day, uh, the uh, ship will approach. Uh, you all will be uh, alerted. And uh, when you come up on deck, uh, you can see off in the distance uh, an island. Uh, there is in the sky above it what looks like a swirling, moving uh, thunderstorm that is crackling with lightning on it um, uh, that seems to, to move around. But the island below it is just absolutely jade green verdant. Like you see maybe a, a thin strip of beach and then everything else is, is mountains, raised areas and jungles and woods and just overgrowth. Uh, and they will load you into uh, a uh, a VTOL uh, on deck that they they roll out, uh, and it will take off from from the deck here, and they will start flying over towards the island. Uh, I think in the distance, as you are are flying in, you may catch a glimpse of something mammoth swooping through the air and the storms there. So just to be clear, we've not yet met our liaison. That's correct. Well, this is more than a bit odd. Serial, you've been around a long time, my friend. Longer than me. Could this be Atlantis? Have you seen it? <laughs> um, a place untouched by God? Now, the, there are two questions here. One, do I? Two, should I say I have? Um, I think that it's time to do some work with, with Weeper, I think. Um, okay. I I think that I want to unleash the dark within to enforce your will on someone physically, socially, or emotionally. I want to begin to um, make Weeper think that that I'm I'm here for him. If that's okay with you, Paul. Yes, sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend. Let me see. What am I looking at here? Um, I'm going to spend all four. Of my darkness tokens. Three is the most. Oh, three is the most. Yes, you're right. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, so I will be left with. Is this using just... your powers to do this, or is this just using your personality? I, well, the, the difficulty with surreal is is quite where one ends and the other one begins. Right. 
I, I think it's unleash the dark within you to enforce your will on someone. Okay. Um, 2d6 plus 3. Oh, goodness me. That's all of 7. That is a 7. Do you want to burn a bond? I'll yeah. Get that to an 8. Yeah. What's the relevant one? Um, the darkness de de the darkness demands of me that my fellow monsters be my worshippers. Yeah. So this really can't go badly wrong. Um, so yes, I will burn that bond with what the darkness demands of me uh, to turn that into an eight. So you would like to make yourself seem resplendent and and helpful and good to Weeper? And, and, well, I think necessary um with in answer to the question weeper there is i have i have existed for so long that there are things i knew that i have forgotten but this is very familiar to me i think you i i think i think this is a place a place of whether it's atlantis or not i don't know but it is it is a place of power um and I suppose what I'm saying here, uh, but, choose to. It can't be Atlantis, can it? Because God struck it down, as God yes. should strike you down. Yes, but but my point, Weeper, is that the existence of the rift, this has been drawn through from hell. Or heaven. Whether God would want Atlantis back from heaven is a different question. Well, it must be closed. So what I'm thinking here is get what you want from them. So so I am see I, I want I want Weeper to believe that I am an authority on this. Or the closest we have to an okay. authority. Are you cool this. with that, Paul? Yeah, yeah, he, he is very old. So okay. um yeah, he, he may know something about it. I think that's reasonably logical. Okay. Um, and I think that I want to avoid reprisals, harm, or cost. That does seem like a good idea. Just in case. So yes, I, I yes, I think there's. I, let me think on it, Weeper, because I this this is there is there is something about this that is so familiar. Very well. That's uh, that's that's very fair. Um, you are indeed uh, old, so I, I would expect you to know something about this. Um, yes, and, and you know you can then share that knowledge with me and our fellow friends, and we can act upon well, it. Well, well, Weeper, I, I, perhaps we should keep this to ourselves. You know, after last time, Egtha rather lost it, and we know Lissa is prone to explosive bouts of temper, so. Why don't we just keep this between ourselves at this point? Now that I've got nothing left to, to to enforce that, that's just that's just me RPing. Very well. Well, I will see how this goes, um, and I will make a call whether I need to reveal this uh, to our colleagues. Um, excellent. Well, thank you for providing that knowledge, Serial. So, Egther, I'd like to do, uh, throw an establishing question to you, if I may. Uh, so, in 2000, the, the rift opened. There was uh, a brief span of time when these uh, monsters demolished locations. Uh, and shortly after, they were able to figure out that some of the monsters, they could connect people up to teenagers, too. Uh, and... Uh, the contact that you're meeting, Fletcher Payne, was uh, the very first pilot. Uh, uh, what you know is that uh, when they get older, they sort of age out and can no longer pilot these things. And it, and they also, it can affect them. It can transform them. They can have mutations that occur afterwards. Um, but uh, you were there uh, at, at Fletcher Payne's last mission. Uh, like, what 
what went on uh his 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 halibaw sacrificed itself to keep a city from being destroyed what what was your role in that how did pain like help you or or protect you Ooh, um Yeah, I was there as, I think there was a, a particular, uh, a, another one of these rift monsters that we were fighting. And I think maybe I had some specific knowledge of it. It was it, it was a type of creature that my people knew something like a, about. Like a beast, beast type Halimaw. Yeah, yeah. Like a giant bear thing or something okay or bear like uh, uh yeah uh and how did how did pain end up protecting you um yeah i think it was by he, I, I think we were fighting it together though he, his halima was doing most of the of the fighting and i think he realized that there was no way to beat this thing without someone dying. There, there was someone would have to die, and he chose to give up his Halimor rather than in in order to to protect me, so that I wouldn't have to sacrifice myself. And maybe he wasn't sure that I was going to do that, so mm -hmm. that could have played it. Uh and uh, so we kind of get like a flashback montage of that. We spent the special effects budget on this. Uh, you know, we've got the high end CG, you know, the 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 riff monster, you know, uh, 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 being destroyed by the sacrifice of this Halimaw uh, and the ship going down. And uh, you uh, uh, you would pain sort of limping away uh, from uh the the explosion in the the background uh at you will head over the lush greenery the rolling greenery of this island uh and then there is a moment where you will see uh a section of a hillside open up uh and kind of pull open and sort of neon genesis evangelion style this building will rise up out of that uh uh and uh you will land uh on top of this uh and then the whole building itself will sink back down uh into the to the ground before the covers close over just a, a, a finality to it uh and then you are going down multiple levels. There are those sp spinning lights when the elevators go down and a sound. We see walkways with personnel going in various different directions. We can see giant, like cavernous uh, uh, banks where there are different Halimaw, uh, you know, stored away uh, uh, during their, their uh, in-between cycles before they're sent up. Uh, and this will all come down. Uh, and then eventually it stops on this sort of main level uh, and the four of you will disembark uh, and uh, you will see this uh, older uh, uh, gentleman. He's maybe, maybe early 40s, late 30s, uh, but you can see he walks with a decided limp. Uh, uh, one of his legs clearly... Uh, uh, there's something uh, that has happened to it, uh, 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 but he's he's strong and he's compensating for it uh, uh, as as best he can, uh, and he will will come up and he makes a beeline for Egther, uh, and uh, he will will go to where uh, you are at. Uh, and uh, uh, he will say, uh, Mr. Servant. Pain. I requested you specifically. They said you had a team that you worked with, so I hope it was not too indulgent of me to request you and your 
companions. Uh, not at all. Um, it seems like a worthy challenge. Plus, you're the only division person who I know what they like to eat. <laughs> huh. All right. Uh, and he will turn to the, the rest of you. Uh, and uh, he'll wave off a set of security teams that have kind of come into the area. Uh, and he'll say, I'm Fletcher Payne. Uh, I'll be... Uh, escorting you uh, and assisting with your operations here. Uh, I know Egther. Uh, the rest of you are. I'm guessing you must be Weeper. Indeed I am. There was a note in your thing. They didn't have a picture, but there was a description. I think I fit the bill quite well, do I not? Uh, yes. Alas, I... this is my friend Cyril, and this is Lissa. Lissa, Cyril, uh, it's good uh, to my, have you here. My yes? dear Commander Payne, I offer my hand. Uh, and he will put his hand out. Uh, and I will, I will, you know, it, it's, it's the hand and shoulder. Uh, the most sincere grip that I can manage. Um, an absolute pleasure uh, to to be cooperating with Mysterious. Um, and you, you are a living legend. I'm glad for at least one of those terms. Yes. It's the first one. But in any case, uh, uh, you understand how uh, uh, the operation works here? Uh, let's walk and talk, walk and talk, and he'll do that gesture, and the camera will kind of start to to move with you West Wing style uh, as he walks you through the area. He says, we so are, what do you make of this guy? Hmm, if he works for mystery, is he a Mr. Ron? I don't know. He's, he's, he's weird. He's a bit larger and than did, life. And did you see the way that he, he assumed Egtha was in charge? I mean, that's a risky position to adopt at the minute, isn't it? He has prior knowledge of Edgar. So yeah, from well, that, remember, he is only a mortal. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, just, just you, uh, you may have to get a grip on Edgar again, is all I'm saying, okay? Let's see what Edgar does before we respond. Well, okay, okay. But just be ready because... You know, we cannot afford that. Kind I'm of always ready again. to help a friend. Indeed, you are, and it's always good to have you as a friend. Indeed. You will walk you along. He will say, uh, "Right now, uh, with one of the Halimah pilots missing, we have three active pilots. Uh, we have a couple of who are on recuperative status." Uh, and uh, we have a, a number of members of staff who are former pilots uh, who have been able to uh, manage uh, in the aftermath of that transition. Uh, the situation is bad. Uh, the particular pilot that we na lost was named Luna Nakahara. Uh, her halama is called Hydra Omicron. She has been the real heart of the team for some time. Uh, and so her loss is uh, somewhat uh, devastating. Uh, her sister is not a pilot, but uh, acts in another capacity here on the island. Uh, as you know, uh, we connect up teen pilots uh, with the Halimaw. They seem to be the only people we've been able to have gain uh, a useful psychic link. Uh, they do age out, uh, and sometimes they are changed by 
the experience. Uh, they are called up when we have a, a rift incursion. Beast will come out and we will dispatch pilots with their Halamaw to deal with the situation. Uh, we still don't know how or why certain monsters fight for us and certain monsters fight against us. Uh, as far as we can tell, we have no discernible difference, no physical signs, no psychic signs that tell us how and why that happens. And he's walking and talking and walkways and scientists and scanner screens and uh, you, you're heading towards a command center. Uh, and as the the four of you are, are walking along, you will see sort of the, the command center is kind of a circular uh, section. And in the middle of it is this enormous glass tube. Uh, it's about 30 feet high uh, with all of this sort of uh, uh, pipings and things running on the outside of it. And inside of that tube is a 30 foot tall beating heart. Uh, and uh, you can see it, you can kind of feel the vibration as it, it beats. Uh, and uh, he will uh, uh, walk you along to the command deck and says, uh, let me get you down to the command area. I'll give you a little more briefing and I'll introduce you to the staff on hand and give you a rundown of the circumstances. Is that okay, Egther? Yes. Let's uh, let's get this over with. Uh, and I think we'll see the, the the group of you gather in there. Uh, and I think we'll see them bringing the pilots in. And Lissa, you are going to recognize one of these pilots. And we'll come back on what that's about here in just a minute as we're going to take our second break. Let's take five and we will come back, okay? So there's a team that's brought down. Uh, uh, in particular, you will see the ops director, uh, the Zamora, our head scientist, uh, uh, Rosario, uh, are there kind of standing back to watch. Uh, and they bring in the three uh, team pilots that they have. Uh, uh, Malika, uh, uh, she's in a wheelchair. Uh, it looks like she might be the uh, oldest uh, of them. Uh, and uh, she looks like she kind of, if there's a distance between people, she's sort of furthest away from the others who are are there. Uh, uh, a stereo uh, pilot, uh, uh, you know, teen, looks a little spooked, uh, like clearly trying to figure out why a, these strangers are here, and why these freakish strangers are here. Uh, 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 like, uh, they, you have the sense that that he deals with the unusual, with the the Halimaw and you know the people that get mutated by the Halimaw, but that you're something, you're a whole another dimension of of that. Uh, and then the uh, last one is uh, Catalina. Uh, she seems the youngest, at least physically looks the youngest. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, Fletcher uh, arrives, uh, uh, she drifts over by him, uh, uh, kind of for, uh, seems like protection. Uh, you will see her uh, briefly communicate with the commander, and uh, you can see that they communicate in sign language rather than uh, uh, anything uh, vocally there. Um, which of these three, Lissa, did you meet and train with before this? Like maybe didn't even realize that they were being sent here as, uh, as pilots for this kind of thing. It was Malika, but right. she wasn't in a wheelchair then. Uh, and like, what did you think of them and why are you worried for them? She was very competent, very driven, but 
I don't see that discipline so much now. What I see is a barely contained anger at, I don't even know what, but okay. she wasn't in a wheelchair then, and she is now, and she's mad as hell, or at least she seems like she can barely contain her anger. So something must have happened. What? I don't know. Is her anger like your anger, or is it different? It's different because it seems like she's mad at the world. Versus what are you mad at? Specific parts of the world. Specific parts of the world, okay. Okay. I mean, depending on the day, Serial's a good candidate, but, yeah. you know, is she, it, the rage yeah, that I'm I, seeing I, I like the is, idea that you perceive her as being angry at the world, but that's certainly not how you are, that that you, uh, uh, yeah. I love that. That's great. Uh, Fletcher Payne will, will uh, kind of briefly introduces them and will say, uh, Mysterious has a strong working work relationship with Division. Division has been kind enough to uh, send in their most elite and crack team to help deal with the situation. Uh, I've worked with uh, Egther before, and I can attest to, to his skill, so I'm pleased with that. And of course, uh, 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 I know that uh, a number of us have heard of Surreal uh, uh, as the, uh, the the face of Division. Uh, so uh, I am looking forward to seeing how this uh goes um and pain will say here is the situation uh luna nakahara is uh the youngest of the teens to be recruited as a pilot uh she took incredibly well to it uh a natural normally we wouldn't put someone of her young years out into the field uh, but she bonded almost immediately with her Halimaw, uh and has been an asset to the team. And and you'll see nods from the other team members. Like clearly they they agree with that assessment. Um, Hydra Omicron is a unique Halimaw. Uh Most of the Rift monsters we can categorize into classes: uh, Titan type, Beast type, Elemental type. Uh, Hydra Omicron is unique. Uh, they're they're weirdly they're covered with eyes, uh, multiple wings, uh, uh, amber. Uh, they bear a resemblance to certain classical depictions of angels, uh, but not not entirely. Uh, uh, the Halimaw has is able to unleash storms uh and uh sound waves uh she can uh with the work that Luna has done she's been able to focus the power to allow her Halimaw to actually summon and manifest a sword using that light and sound power uh usually that's the kind of skill and focus that only late stage Halima pilots are able to manage. So here is what we know. We know that the last we saw of them, they were preparing for a launch sequence. Uh, we had a, a modest incursion. Uh, they were being sent up. Uh, when Luna came on the comms uh, and said the apocalypse comes together we will remake this broken world and then all of our scanners lost the signal uh for the pilot and the halima and we haven't been able to pick them up since we know that they have not left the island we know that they have not passed through the fields. I mean, you saw the barriers coming in. Nothing has left. 
and, and 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 I think that this point, Surreal is 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 a bit sick of this, um, and under his breath says, "Face and in this company, brains." I'm going to take four darkness points for uh, being nasty, arrogant, and say, "Hang on, so you've lost a monster. It's not on the island. It no, hasn't that's got not to what I said. You've misunderstood oh. me, Mister Surreal." Well, we have lost a monster. Clearer. You are correct. We do not believe that it has left the island. Okay, but it hasn't crossed the barriers. Exactly. Has it gone back through the rift? We do not know. So it's on the island or in the rift? That that seems like a reasonable hypothesis. Okay, okay, and and you've you've searched the island, you can't find it. How do you lose a lose a monster? I mean, this is a big monster. Exactly, that's the problem. How do we lose one? Okay, that's why you're here to answer that question. Indeed, so, indeed, so. Um, Surely, being okay. a god, you're omnipotent, aren't you, Cyril? So you should know where the monster is. We have this problem all the time, Weeper. <laughs> I was or a god. You basically, not, so you you are not a god. I will be a god. Ah, but currently you are not a god. At this moment in time, like many people, I am on a journey. Paint says, "I will take two for being petty." Yes, I can play you the video. Uh, do you wish to talk with the personnel now, or shall I dismiss them and you can speak with them uh, individually? No, I think we, we want would to... like to speak to them. Okay. Uh, they are looking a little uncomfortable at this whole God talk uh, that is happening there. Uh, Exer, what's your reaction as this weeper or surreal uh, uh, bit occurs? Frustration, mainly. Like Egther wants to get this over with so he can go back to what <laughs> he and Lisa were, were doing before. But okay. uh, he also knows that trying to get in between Surreal and Weeper when they get on with this talk, it's pointless. It's it's not going to uh, to stop them. So uh and Lisa. I am rolling my eyes at this. Okay. Like I am rolling my eyes like probably a lot like Malika is. Okay. And I just say, Surreal, will you please shut the entire fuck up? You were a god. Oh, yay. You're not now. You're just I think an asshole with a lot of tattoos. I think at this point we've probably triggered honorary human status. Okay. Because once a scene, um, I have to describe how you compromise in a significant way to please the public. Uh, and so at this point, I bite my tongue and I don't say anything, but I'll take a bond with the public. Okay. And I'll take two darkness tokens for being... Eh, reactive, vicious, kind of the same thing right now. It's like, and, and Weeper, I was actually starting to think that you showed such compassion and empathy to Egther last time out. I was actually starting to think that maybe you weren't just some fundamental fanatic. And yet, here you are, bantering back and forth with Surreal again. God this, God that. Jesus. If y'all are gods, just go off and be gods. Payne turns to the pilots and says, you're dismissed. We will call you in when we need you. Uh, and uh, uh, like sends them on. He clearly doesn't want them seeing this. Oh, Mr. Payne, we could do this all day long. We often do. 
rather you not if if it's something that I have a, a voice in at this point, uh, sir. So uh, can you explain the beating heart of the organization? That is uh, the heart of my Halimah, uh, uh, Elector Rogue. Uh, Ector was present when she sacrificed herself to put down a major incursion, uh, saved a city from annihilation. Uh, she, she didn't want to die. Uh, her heart refused to die. We were able to retrieve it. And uh, since then, she has, as you say, become the literal beating heart of the organization. She supplies the power to the facility. Impressive. Yeah. And he will walk over, like, and he actually kind of puts his hand on the glass, clearly has strong sentimental meaning to him. Uh, he'll say, let, let me... Is the top of the tank open? Pardon? Is the... So where, oh, no, where... it's, it's like it's like an enclosed tank at the top. Uh, you know, it's one of those sealed there. Okay. Uh, he will uh, 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 lead the, the four of you over, if you'll follow over to a uh, video monitor. Uh, and uh, he will play back for you the video that they have from inside the, the cockpit uh, at the end. And you will see this, this teenager, uh, young looking, uh, kind of uh, brilliantly purple and blue hair. Uh, she has her, her uh, outfit on. Uh, uh, you see her there and uh, uh, she's getting ready. Uh, and, you see her look up and there's this change that passes over her face. And I think surreal, this is very much your bailiwick as you will see the signs of possession. Uh, uh, and then she looks up at the camera and says, intones those words and then the video cuts out. So the question is, any hint of the nature of possession? I'd like to grasp for a key. Let's have you make that roll. How many tokens do you wish to spend? I'm going to spend three tokens. Uh, three tokens, not two tokens. There we go. Uh, 2d6. Eight and three is 11. Okay. Uh, so uh, on uh, on eleven. Let's um, however, what? You get some I bonds am, to burn. I do. I I think it would be it would be in in public like this because there's still lots of technicians about even if the kids have gone. So I think that um, I will just restrain my powers a little uh, to ensure that doesn't go over the top. So I'll burn a bond with my followers, the public, uh, to to go back down to uh, a 10. So I think one of the things you will note, like all of the focus is on the pilot in this. Uh, 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 like that's drawn everyone's attention. Uh, but I think that you will see kind of at the corner of the, the monitors, uh, uh, there's the edges where you can kind of see just kind of outside the cockpit a little bit and uh, uh, you kind of ask them to, you know, can they scan and pan and enhance, enhance, enhance. Uh, you will left, see left, left enhance. Yeah, uh, some of the, the, the skin of the Halimaw uh, uh, and you see it's like rippling and changing like something is happening to it like it's undergoing some kind of violent change or evolution uh and that 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 feels significant to you so if i put hydro omicron underwent 
a change to. Does that? Fly? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, Weeper, what about you? What are you? I would doing? like to activate the I remember the taste of you on the beating heart. Okay. Uh, let, how many uh, tokens do you want to spend on that? I'm going to spend two, please. I've come across somebody that has encountered um, the beating heart before. So uh, let's go and roll with me. Of course, I haven't got it up already. Um, Eight, nine, ten. Ten. Uh, Perfect, though. What? What do you want from that choice? Uh, so, uh, for the public, what we have is um, eight, ten. Uh, the Remnant whispers many secrets. Choose one. Uh, you once fed on them, gain one bond. Uh, the sight of them calms the hunger, clear a condition, or they <clears throat> they may one day consume you, erase one ruin. Uh, I'm going to select that, erase one ruin. Uh, I think they may come back to life, um, mm -hmm. even bigger and stronger, and maybe be a harbinger. Yeah, I think out. I think that that you can tell that this thing. And I, 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 it may not be a harbinger, but it may be an eater of harbingers. This is a, this is a, this is a beast of protection and vengeance, and like this is a defender. Uh, and and the bit of you that that knows that you could go over to the dark side kind of recoils away from this thing because it is so strong and so purely dedicated in its in its approach uh like it is it is about the mission does that seem fair uh listen what about you what are you doing Why don't I ask Egther and then we'll come back to you, Lisa. Uh, Sorry about that. Oh, um, I had a call come in that I absolutely had to take. Sure, sure. Um, so what I realized is that uh, in taking the ruin move, I realized that I actually doubled up on that same function. So I'd like to switch that if I may, but we can take care of that in a little bit. Sure. But I think what I'm doing is I want to talk to my harbinger to find out what the hell is really going on here. Okay. My dark patron, because this is some weird stuff. So how many tokens do you wish to spend? Oh, I'm going to spend three. Okay. Um, and then let's see, where is that? Um, well, actually, this is just, uh, this isn't, um, a role. This is marking either yeah. one ruin to do what they so, want. Or so what two. is it you yeah. need? What is materially that you need from them? I need information. I need information about. So if you're going to do that, then that's going to be a grasping for keys roles. If that's okay. what you're going for, because that, that'll be a different thing. But if there's something specific, like a, uh, a, a result or a change or something like that to change the game state in some way we can that's that seems like what the dark patron is for okay um can i use that to get time with malika time alone and uninterrupted sure absolutely uh 
And I mean, completely uninterrupted. Nobody walking in, nobody interrupted. Like, if, if, if we could freeze time so that Malika and I can talk without anybody else even possibly overhearing, that would be ideal. Sure. I think that your patron says, I will absolutely do that for you. No cost. I want you really? to talk to her. You're being so generous today. It's because I've been so parsimonious in the past. Consider this uh, me making up for that. You know, I have to say, of all the harbingers I've talked to, you are most definitely the nicest. I am. And I think that uh, uh, off screen, we see Gazamax smile. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I think there is this weird slowing down of time here. Uh, uh, Weeper, Surreal, Egther, kind of all, everything comes to a stop. We hear that sort of last of the beat of that heart as everything freezes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see uh Malika you know uh a, a little ways away down the thing they as they were heading out uh away uh and you will see her kind of stop her wheelchair and and look around kind of maybe a little freaked out but mm -hmm. trying to trying to figure out what is going on here I'll walk up and say hey kid Hey. Um. So listen. You know. Uh, well, you know I can do some weird stuff. This is basically a bubble of time. Everything around us is either not moving at all or moving so slowly it might as well not be moving. All right. What the hell happened? When the last time I saw you, what happened? And I kind of pointed the wheelchair. She looks at you and she gestures over. And I think the camera pans to the uh, uh, enormous, the racks where the Halimaw are sleeping. And uh, she will say, that happened. That happened. You'll see she gestures to this, what looks like an enormous black cat that's kind of uh, in a bay there with these huge sort of uh, tentacles roiling off of it. Uh, and... Uh, uh, teeth that are, are greenish with acid uh, and she says the older we get the more the bond changes us some people can can walk away without out any kind of transformation, but I've been in here long enough that that this is what has happened. On a meta level, the ruin move that I would like to choose instead of the uh, whatever it was, but we could still use Gazamax and everything. I'd like to choose my anointed one. Okay. And that allows me to find someone innocent and naive, a perfect vessel. They're willing to embody raw power and take my place for a time. I would like to imbue her with some of my power so that she can walk again. Uh, 
think that's too much or i think that's too much because i think that move is intended for you to come up with a new character okay is, fair. i think is the the kind of uh, intent of that um fair. uh uh, I mean, that's interesting, but I don't think it's appropriate for the, the situation necessarily. We're totally in. okay. Um, in that case, I'll just, I'll look at Malik and say, listen, you know the sort of things that I can do. If this is what this place has done to you, I think maybe it needs to have a little something done to it. Don't pretend you understand what's going on here. I I remember you. I remember you kicking back at everything here. This place has a purpose. Yeah, I'm pissed. But yeah, I know what I'm doing is for a greater good. I hope you know that too. You know, with that, I'm totally okay with time catching up. Okay. Or starting again. Yeah. And can I mark a condition? Uh, sure. I would like to mark despairing. Okay. As she heads off. Because she just kind of put me in my place. Okay, that seems uh, that seems reasonable there. Uh, Exer, I think there's a bit where you kind of there. You see, uh, uh, Weeper is communicating and and sort of talking, and then there's a, a flicker, and Liss is no longer by you. Uh, but at the corner of your eye, I can see that she's down there by uh, uh, Malika. What are you doing? Um, I think I want to talk to Cain and see if I can, because maybe I misunderstood that the, the first briefing we got, but I think there was, was there like a, a specific incursion or was it just, or just that they've lost this, this particular uh, monster and its pilot? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you can talk to Payne. And he says uh, it was a standard level three creature, nothing uh, uh, off the scale, nothing uh, uh, extraordinary. Uh, she, Luna was next up in the rotation. It should have been something easy for her to deal with. Uh, she went to uh, uh, take off, and that's when this occurred. Uh, she went missing. Uh, we scrambled everyone else immediately. Uh, they were able to dispatch this, this thing that appeared, uh, but we found no sign or trace of her. I know that, uh, humans are fond of, um, Equipping their your your, your um, valuable pieces of of equipment with various tracking devices and such. Are there no such things on these monsters? That's just the problem. There are, but we have no signal from them. We have nothing. We've tried everything that we can on a conventional level, which is why I called you and your companions, your team in uh, uh as experts well then i uh as soon as my uh companions are done gathering what information they can here we i believe we should go out to uh where the creature disappeared He says, uh, all right. I know you can handle yourself, Egther, but Island Zero is a 
It's a dangerous place. I remember. And I think actually we're at that point where maybe this is a good place for us to, to stop. We've got the preliminary setup for the, the mission. Uh, we've got uh, the first of our keys in place there uh, on the mystery map. This is a complexity eight mystery. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, which which also means one of the things, the reason I, I went with a higher one is because so that does mean we can go to more grasping keys moves for you guys to, to play around with that and, and so on. So uh, to give yourselves a little more room for that. Uh, I do think though uh, that uh, as this uh, 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 section sort of ends, there is the eh, eh, eh of the alert that comes up and I think we start to see the the screens light up across the board. You know, they 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 go uh, uh, across from right to left, uh, uh, lighting up, uh, and you know, incursion, 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 and uh, you hear the 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 sounds of them uh, uh, shouting for people and getting the pilots ready to to send out, and that was going to be. Uh, essentially, our first tick on our doom clock uh, is is another incursion. Uh, let's do end of session for XP, for check-in on XP triggers and so on, and then uh, a quick uh, stars and wishes. Uh, uh, let us begin. Uh, uh, Lissa, what was your question? Uh, did I destroy something precious and beautiful? And uh, I I don't think so. Okay. Not yet, but certainly you'll have the opportunity here soon. Uh, you certainly are in a place where you're going to be able to, to to use your powers in a very different way than you were in the last mission. So I think that's a, that's a mm -hmm. good one. Yeah. Uh, and then since I didn't get a key, there's one ruin, correct? One ruin, yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, did you express your monstrous nature and or your humanity? I think so. When I, in that conversation with Malika. Okay. Uh, uh, Mark XP, did you learn something significant about yourself and or your impending ruin? I, I think I did in that, uh, Malika kind of put me in my place. Like she has a goal, she has purpose and, what do I have? Okay. Like I just showed up ready to break shit because I knew her and I thought that like something bad had happened. She's like, no, this is, I'm doing something good. So. Did you learn something significant about a fellow monster? There might be one more of Egther's kind left. I think that's fair. Uh, Egther, what did you have for your start of session? I had, did you seek solitude and turn away from hope for the future? Uh, and I think I did that at, yeah. the, at the beginning of the session. I think that's fair. Uh, did you express your monstrous nature and or your humanity? Um, I think so. It's in the debrief scene. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, did you learn something significant about yourself and or your impending ruin? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, uh, I think you you did, but both both what you saw of your future and uh, 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 what you felt there, learning that you're not the the, the last. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. you learn something significant about a fellow monster? Ooh, um, no. Really, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, and Marker Ruin. Serial. What did you have for your question? Uh, it was... Uh, it's never quite where I expected it to be. There it is. Did you tell the truth when you shouldn't have? I think I did in the briefing. Absolutely. 100%. Mark, uh, mark an XP. Uh, did you uh, express your monstrous nature and or your humanity? 
I'd have said both of those during the briefing. Yeah. Uh, did you learn something significant about yourself and or your impending ruin? Yes, the risk that Weeper poses to my ordained path. Okay. <laughs> Weeper's humanity is a dangerous tool if not carefully managed. Mark XP, did you learn something significant about a fellow monster? Um, not sure I interacted with Egtha or Lissa enough to learn anything new. Yeah, they were... Um, Weeper can be manipulated, though. If you feel that, that that's significant, you can mark XP. Well, given the context, it's pretty important at this point in the proceedings. Okay. You know, down the road, knowing yeah. that there's a way... You you should explain to Paul exactly why this matters. <laughs> yeah. Um, the... the uh, I when, whenever I mark a, a a point a stepping stone on the route to my, you know, harbinger status, um, Lowell gets to ask the question or to state some some uh, something that gets in the way, and um, when I chose that my fans uh, are going to be my army that will serve me, uh, he said a seed of doubt grows within you. Give a PC or NC, NPC the means to weaken you. Uh, and I chose we Weeper could use his surprising humanity against me at the last to turn me from my ordained path. So you are both uh, a barrier and a, an essential tool. The minute. Uh, all right. And uh, I did discover a key. Yeah, so you don't have to mark room. Fine, so I'll just take all four XP, which will nudge me over into a move. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I know you came in late, but let's see if we can, is there anything you think we hit uh, on our, our list there? Uh, I think uh, just one XP for uh, knowing something about a fellow monster, that chat with Serial, uh, you know, how where he sees himself. Right, right. Um, in, in the structure of the world. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mark an XP and mark a ruin. I certainly will. Uh, let's do quick uh, stars and wishes. Uh, Lisa, can I start back with you? Sure thing. Um, so, I think my star for the session has to, really has to go to Egther because of all of the, or, well, Anders, because of the role playing that you did and the anger of finding out that there might be another one left, nobody told you, etc. And secondly, Surreal, you seemed almost, or, well, Alan, you made Surreal almost seem vulnerable in this session, almost, almost weak at times, and certainly petty. I mean, I wondered what was going to happen when Egther was seen as the team leader, and uh, well. It was about what I figured, better than I had hoped. Um, yeah, so there, there stars wishes. Um, you know, I, I think Lissa spends so much time fighting with Surreal and bonding with Egther and leaning on Egther. I think next time, I'd, if Paul, if you're okay with this, I'd like to see kind of what happens when Weeper and Lissa have some have to do something. How they because it's. One of the things I said at the start of the session, Paul, was given the compassion and empathy that Weeper showed, particularly Egther in the previous sessions, um, it felt like Weeper might be the one to save Lissa from the darkness. So I'd like to see, I'd like to explore that in the next session, if that's okay. Awesome. Uh, Andish. Yeah, I'll start with a wish, and that this is for myself to look for opportunities to grasp peace because that's a part of the game I haven't. It's not at the forefront of my mind, so I think to to uh, to lose uh, sight of it. So I, I want to try to push for that a bit more. Um, stars, I I really enjoyed. Uh, Alan and Paul's discussion about Atlantis and <laughs> how it was struck down by God and, and 
that whole part was uh, was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, to uh, Pocket for for having Lista just pull um, pull Ether out of his his frustrated uh, inaction into going out to do something. Uh, that was uh, uh, I think that was an interesting way to uh, to move that scene forward. Awesome. Uh, Surreal? Uh, yeah, I think um, a star to both you and to Scott for the interaction between Lissa and uh, Malika. Um, I thought it was really good. I thought it was really because it, it 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 kind of turned the the balance in that conversation on a sixpence, which I thought was very clever. Um, I enjoyed Eg Egtha's debrief. And and thank you, Paul, for leaning into a theological discussion on whether when God takes things from the earth, he stores them in heaven or in hell. <laughs> uh, and wishes? Wishes. I yeah. I mean, I've I've just, I've already spent my XP for next time. Uh, the the improvement on a new power of darkness. Uh, I've gone for uh, weapons. Oh, hang on, where's it? Weapons of light and sound, um, and and just as a heads up, I will be looking to to find ways to get those weapons to my growing army of darkness. Okay. A note of that, uh, and uh, lastly, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I arrived halfway through, so I'm not going to waste people's time really. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, only wish going forwards a bit more East Anglia. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, that, that, that's fine. Yeah, I arrived late, so I'm not going to waste people's time. Okay. Well, if there is anything you think about, like having having had, seen the dynamics of the, the, the setup, if there's anything particularly you want, uh, we'll try an angle for that. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.